Right now, it is time for the Berkshire Edge on air. Now, you can find the Berkshire Edge 24 hours a day, seven days a week. Where? TheBerkshireEdge.com. I said TheBerkshireEdge.com. But right now, David and Marcy are going to join us on the radio. Good morning. Good morning. Here we are on the radio. Yeah, good morning. <laughs> David, oh. David, David, you got to sound a little more up on this. Yeah, this is like the third, third I won't say third week, and I'll say the third consecutive show where you've sounded like, like you're not a morning guy. Good morning. Yeah, we've had a little domestic. Well, you know, no, we, you, well, you know, we, we stay up late. And, um, oh, boy. So we're tired at this point of the day. And work. also we, uh, oh, we had run out of cat food. No. <laughs> That's not good. <laughs> I, I, I think that you will find if you survey your fellows that everyone had a domestic, um, just it, this splat in the middle of attempting to do the day. There was some sort of domestic <laughs> See, David, it's, it's a great thing about getting up at 3.30 in the morning. No. Uh, my, my, yeah, animals, just... my, my animals get all the grumpiness. <laughs> yeah, uh, yeah. yeah. I, got down, I got down early, early and discovered that, yet again, the horoscopes were wrong. But just trying to get the brain to kick in. So it's, it's oh, just, right. anyway. Well, anyways, it's good to have you guys here, and let's Thank talk you. about... Great Barrington Town elections. Well, well, not only Great Barrington, yeah. but all the elections in the... You know, this is town meeting season. Town <laughs> meeting and town election season. So women, and, women uh, are back. Pardon? Women are back. Women are back, oh, yeah. in a way. Um, and uh, uh, Great Barrington has two on the Board of Selectmen. And we have an, select an, board. a select board. Uh, and we have an, an, another one. Lee Davis was elected to the select board. Uh, she's quite a remarkable person in her own right. Uh, and um, she's a real community activist. Uh, you know, she volunteers, and uh, she's really put out herself to, to help the community. And uh, she's been on the finance committee, and she's a young woman with three kids. And... Uh, uh, one of them is in college, so uh, uh, we have a picture of her on the front page, uh, beaming with her two daughters. <laughs> well, we also had in uh, Agramont, Lucinda yes, Vermeulen, um, who also had been on the planning board in Agramont, um, had uh, was elected to the select board by a landslide. Oh, by a landslide, yes. Something like three hundred and seventy to seventy, or something, yeah, something like that. Something yeah. like that. Um, and uh, where there was, and also there was kind of an upset in Sheffield, where a very you know long term member of the community and a, a very established person. Or whose family was, you know, was very long term, was beaten by a relative newcomer who had only been here for about eight years. I mean, you know, that's barely, barely a resident. That you know. barely scratches <laughs> the surface. <laughs> I was going to say. Certainly not considered that qualifies, a you, that qualifies you as a weekender. <laughs> right, um, and Lucinda, whose race I was um, watching, you know, she is. She's the owner of Kenver, the, yep. the sporting uh, yep. goods and, and clothing store in South Vermont. Um, which yep. was started by her husband, Ken Vermeulen, and when she had a retail background, and when he died... She, she also had a broadcasting it. background, Did you know that? She had a broadcasting background also? Yeah, absolutely. She was a, oh, I didn't know that, yeah, but I know that she yeah. was a buyer for a, uh, a very big department store chain. Yeah. I think it was Carson Peary Scott, um, and uh, um, when she met she she met Ken on a plane, <laughs> and she came to Agramont. She married him and moved to Agramont, and she's been very active in Agramont. She's been a very active member of the planning board, and she was also challenged by another woman who comes from a farm family, so again, a family that's been here for a very long time, but Lucinda had far more experience um, um, and far more sophistication than, than her opponent had. So she won handily. I mean, it was really a landslide for her because there was another election, a planning board election in Egremont, and uh, the, the, that was a much closer race. 
Right. So we have women. We have new, relative newcomers. And um, let, and let, and shiver me timbers, sit me down, shut me up, lock the door, don't let me out. Uh, two big things happened, uh, which finally. Oh, in the town meeting. Yeah, yeah. We'll, we'll we'll put an end to this. Yes, we it's, didn't it, talk to you last week. No, the, the the ban on water, single use of water was it was affirmed, and also right, right. really we have, we, great, yes, the Great Barrington down. has this ban on single use plastic <laughs> water bottles, and now and, it's uh, finally. Okay, <laughs> and uh, for good reason. We're trying to take one small step to to uh, to mitigate the, the the what the flood of plastic that uh, you know of endangering our environment, and uh, uh, we banned it, uh, which was a, you know a lot of there are a lot of commercial there are a lot of people who. Uh, Felt that uh, there were some people who felt that there were this was an intrusion and un, uh, an un, inappropriate intrusion of government uh, in, in in banning these these items. So uh, they brought a petition to the town meeting, and it was again soundly defeated. <laughs> Very soundly. Very soundly. I mean, actually, silently, but soundly. <laughs> well, it went to a uh, it went to a vote by hand. Yeah. And uh, it was overwhelming. <laughs> there were uh, it was, uh, really it was. We had a then, we had a picture of the vote. I mean, it was a, a sea of yellow markers held high in the air to keep the to turn it to turn this uh, petition down that would have uh, rescinded the ban. And so, uh, when and those in favor of rescinding, there were about eight. <laughs> you know, about out of four hundred. Yeah. Now, so how was, was how was this the, was the second night of the town meeting? Yeah, how was how yeah. was the how 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 the you? I mean, it's great to see that the middle school is going to be named after W. E. B. Du Bois. Oh yeah, how, you how, know that is a, well. That's that, not a binding. I mean, that's no. That's that a is a recommendation. It's a regional school, so uh, district. But uh, so there are two other towns: West Stockbridge and Stockbridge. However, it's um, a big. It's a big step. It's a big. But it's a big step uh, to, I think, uh, over overcoming the the uh, resistance to honoring this this uh, remarkable philosopher and uh, uh, philosopher who was who was a native of Great Barrington, after all, um, and um, he was a founder of the. One of the founders of the NAACP. Um, he was a brilliant writer, uh, and uh, he was the first uh, African American to go to Harvard. <laughs> um, and uh, he's just, he was just a, he was just a remarkable individual who uh, the town, for a number of reasons, uh, had never gotten itself uh, the courage to honor. And now several things have been happening. One is that there's a uh, proposed uh, statue or monument to him on the library lawn. Proposed. Proposed. And uh, a proposal to rename the elementary school after him. So this is a real turnaround from uh, years ago when naming the elementary school, the elementary school after him was turned away. Tide has changed. <laughs> well, I, I, and it's and the tide is going in the right direction. It's just it it's just a really nice thing to see, which I think that stigma might finally be breaking up. I hope so. Yeah. Um, well, this is you know look uh, you know just in terms of trends. I mean, um, you know, even though I mean the uh, the the local election in Great Barrington is nonpartisan. You're not voting by party. Um, the uh, the candidates are identified by party affiliation, um, and so I noticed yesterday um, that you know I, I noticed who was affiliated with what, and so in Great Barrington, none of the Republicans won. Um, there was one rep- Republican who was a known conservative um, running for. Um, the library. Library. Oh, there yeah. Three, you had to choose three, two out of three, and the Republican lost. 
And the Republican on the select board lost. You had to pick two out of three. Um, and the uh, newcomer won in Sheffield. So we have, you know, I mean, things are changing. And I, I imagine that the people who have been here f- forever are feeling kind of displaced um, that, you know, these were old conservative towns. And now, you know, the either... Times are changing, or there's an influx of newcomers who are taking over. Yeah, well, I, you know, I wouldn't be surprised if you'll find somebody from this conservative uh, core to uh, propose that we build a wall. <laughs> you know, maybe on Route 23 there, and on Route 7, to well, prevent people proposed. from coming from Connecticut. Well, it was Route 23. proposed after 9/11. Somebody proposed that uh, people yeah, the, be blocked. Yeah, New Yorkers uh, could not come here from, from New York. Believe it or not, there was a proposal by the by Ed McCormick. The uh, <laughs> uh, he was head of the emergency. <laughs> I'm sorry. Management. <laughs> I'm sorry. That's that's <laughs> that's <laughs> Colbert. That, that's I mean, that's Colbert show worthy. <laughs> what? <laughs> that's Colbert show worthy. <laughs> You hate to bring that up, but, you know. <laughs> but Meanwhile, along the same line. We're as crazy as everybody else here. That's what... Along the same lines, we also have a story about a woman named Gwendolyn Van Zant, who is an African-American woman and founder of an organization called Multicultural Bridge. And she was honored as the Berkshire Business and Professional Woman of Achievement. Now, what's it that honored her? I forget the name of the organization. That's terrible. But anyway, um, you know, she has been um, quite a prominent woman. She's not, I mean, she's not, she's a young woman. I mean, relatively young. She's probably in her 40s, maybe? Yep. Yeah. Um, Who has been very active in, in trying to bridge the gap between races and cultures. So, um, interesting enough, her husband is white, yep. um, uh, and, and so they have a multicultural bridge right in their own marriage. <laughs> <laughs> um, but, uh, um, so, you know, there is, I mean, I, I am hoping that African Americans here are feeling, uh, um, you know, feeling that there's a little bit of progress being made on their behalf, because... The speakers, it was, it was quite moving, the speakers who spoke for and against the recommendation to name the school after W.E.B. Du Bois. And there was um, one African-American man who got up and spoke about how difficult it's been for him here. Mm. Um, yeah, that's right. He was quite moving. Quite moving. Um, um, about, um, you know, and he is looking forward to a little bit of recognition. There's a long time, black, long standing black population in Great Barrington. This was a stop on the uh, well, on we the might, Underground look, Railroad. We, we have in the past talked about the Clinton Church, right. uh, the yeah. AME Zion Church, which is nestled right in the heart of the downtown of Great Barrington, which was an African American church. Right. Uh, and there are a number of people that are, have gotten together to, to restore that building, which needs a new roof and so on and so forth, and return it, restore it to a, a kind of uh, center, uh, if, not, if not a church, at least a cultural center. So that, things really are changing, yeah. yes, little by little, um, and it's good to see. All right. <laughs> Let's, uh, now, something else before our time runs out that we really want to draw your attention to is... Um, we are running every Friday a, a series of um, videos called Talking with Teens About Substance Use. Not substance abuse, but substance use. use. yeah. And they really are worth looking at. Um, they're they're uh, being put out by a, a group here in Great Barrington called the Railroad Street Youth Project. And they have, and they, they are videotapes of little scenarios of conversations between a teen and an adult. Um, and they are tips, I mean, not, not only are they full of information, but they're also tips 
on uh, um, how to talk to a teen about you know, how to show respect, how to approach the subject, uh, um, what a parent should know, and what. But teens. it's really it's really also for teens. Yeah, it is. It to, is for teens too. Uh, to uh, to realize to, to what realize the how are. and but also how to talk to and and that they should talk with their parents and adults. So it's 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 a really interesting little uh, series, and each, each as, as as Marcy said, each one has a little scene, you might say, a little dramatization of a conversation between right. a teen and an adult, um, or between two teens. So it's it's really it's really educational, and it's uh, it's part of the uh, uh, community health program uh, effort to educate people about substance abuse. And uh, how to avoid it. So, all right. Uh, it's really we recommend it. And so, how would they find? Um, oh, they, they go. They go on the go on the edge, and they can search for uh, talking with teens. So, right. just uh, do a, you know, go to thebrooksrights.com and then search talking with teens. Yeah. Yeah, yep. there's a search that, bar up on search there. Bar. Yeah, search bar. And actually, box. actually, if you don't, if you if you, if you just want to go, to, just put that into a Google. By the way, it will come up as well. Uh, yeah, yeah. Berkshire yeah. Edge and yeah. talking with. But they teams. are yeah. they are very interesting. They're very well done. They're very short, but um, they uh, they have a lot of information. And by the way, I'll put in a pitch here for the Railroad Street Youth Project, which is just a terrific little organization that. Uh, is for teens. They have uh, next to the ball fields and uh, skateboard park down on Bridge Street uh, in the center of town. They have a little build, a little headquarters, and uh, uh, they meet there regularly. And it's a real uh, resource and refuge for kids. Uh, and it's run by uh, some really talented adults. And uh, it's been it's been around for, I think, like 20 years, and it's really, it's really uh, a resource for, for, for teens. All right. So, yeah. Uh, oh, I, by the way, just to, um, the uh, organization that honored Gwen Van Zandt was the Berkshire Business and Professional Women, okay. um, and they called her the 2019 Woman of Achievement. So... All right. Well, to go to the next story, we have about six minutes left, but uh, it's plenty of time to talk about Pete Buttigieg, uh, the, the 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 candidate who has come out of nowhere to become uh, a central well, figure. Every now. so often, we have a um, yes. How do you pronounce his name? That's the first thing. Buttigieg. Yeah, Buttigieg. Yeah. <laughs> think uh, think but, of uh, boot ah and JPEG. <laughs> but, uh, Buttigieg. Buttigieg. <laughs> But uh, we have uh, writers, you know, we, we run stories that are not only uh, about local issues, but we have r- writers who, who write, uh, reflect on national issues. And uh, this, is, this is one. Uh, Mary, uh, he's the mayor of what? Uh, South Bend. S- South Bend, Indiana, and uh, is declared for president, uh, his candidacy for president, and he has a book. And uh, one of our writers uh, reviews his book and finds him to be an intriguing uh, candidate. Um, of course, at this point, almost anybody would be an intriguing <laughs> candidate. Well, there's, 20, but, there's 22 uh, possibilities you know, of intriguing candidates. What? I mean, it, it, it's, I mean, what I mean is that it, we, we need somebody to <laughs> replace yeah. the disaster we have. Uh, uh, but... Uh, Anyways, it's a really interesting review, and it's uh, uh, rec- we can recommend it. All right. You know, speaking of the disaster we have, we also, <laughs> I mean, it's not on our list, but, you know, we have a uh, financial guy who writes us a, uh, a weekly or a regular column. I don't know. Is it weekly? Yes, a weekly. A weekly column. Um, who, and, uh, Alan Harris. Alan Harris, sorry. Um, and he has a very interesting article in Today's Edge um, about the uh, trade war with China, um, putting it in perspective, but also making it very clear that if this trade war seems to be threatening the economy, his 
feeling is that you can bet that Trump is going to abandon the trade war because he is not going to allow this to interfere with his uh, election campaign. Right, we'll have so, to see what and, happens. And there, also yeah. the fact that the trade war and the conf- is, is exacerbated by Trump's policy confusion that, uh, you know, he says some one thing to the Chinese one day, then they show up in Washington to uh, discuss what he had said a few days before, and he says something completely different. And so, you know, they're very confused. Um, maybe well, well so is everyone else. Maybe yeah. he's got ADD. Yeah. I mean, maybe this is an, a negotiating uh, technique, but, um, you know, well, it certainly is confusing the Chinese and, and not likely to be doing us very much good. All right. Um, I, w- I want to wrap. We only have about two minutes left, so we want to talk about the students who walked out of yeah. classes protesting inaction on climate change. Yes, right. Well, this was, you know, our, our students here are quite active <laughs> <laughs> and, and politically aware, and so they we have a story about them uh just marching out of class and taking part in a national protest against climate change. After all, it's going to be, they're the ones that are going to suffer from this. No, it's true. You know, I heard somebody speaking the other day who said, look, by the time us middle-aged people, by the time this hits, we middle-aged people will be, you know, past, if we're still here, (laughs) um, past the uh, point where, you know, where it's going to make a huge difference to our lives. But, Young kids, are, they're going to be hit with a serious climate change right in the middle of their, you know, the prime of their lives. So, or the um, consequences of it, The yeah. consequences of, of climate change. So, you know, it's, it's really incumbent on them to start to protest. Um, well, I've seen elementary school kids. I, I, I have a, some pictures of kids standing along the road uh, outside Bircher Country Day School, for example, holding signs about protesting climate change and calling on the government to, to you know, do something, at least uh, take, you know, be serious about uh, overcoming this. And it's, it's so hopefully that that uh, attitude and uh, will prevail when they will be with them, you know, when they're adults. Yeah. So we may be seeing a sort of a change from the bottom up, you might say, in in the uh, attitude of uh, of you know of people in this country, so that'll be interesting to see. All right, well, all those yeah. stories, all those stories, and more every day, twenty four hours a day. The Berkshire Edge dot com. Oh, twenty six hours a day. Actually. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> Maybe put it up to twenty eight because I we all know what you okay, mean. Twenty eight hours. <laughs> uh, the Berkshire Edge dot com. That is the Berkshire Edge dot com. We'll speak to you guys next week. You bet. Okay. All right. Have Thanks a good again. Week. Right. Uh, David and Marcy from uh, the Berkshire Edge, the Berkshire Edge dot com. Uh, and this is the uh, Berkshire Edge on air, of course.